I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji Guys. This could be one of the most exciting Fuji Guys videos ever. It's That's the right. first look for our new interchangeable lens system camera called the X-Pro1. I'm sure if you're looking at this video, you've probably already read about this camera and you're excited to see it. So here's your first look. Um, everyone probably out there is probably familiar with the X100 as well. So this was our first X-Series camera. It uses an APS-C size uh, CMOS sensor. Uh, this is a brand new APS-C CMOS sensor, uh, 16 megapixel yep. with uh, some very exciting uh, new technology into it. Um, anyhow, let's go through. We've got the, the three lenses here, the three prime lenses that we're launching with this camera. Billy in this video is just going to take us through kind of all the top, bottom sides of the camera and give you a look around it and we'll have some other videos too. So, Billy, take us through it. Absolutely, Greg. First, I just want to point out, you know, the three different prime lenses that we are offering with the X-Pro1 right at launch. Uh, we had the 18mm f2 uh, uh, lens, which uh, equivalent to 35mm on this camera would be approximately 27mm. We also have the 35mm f1.4, again, a very fast prime lens. Mm -hmm. Again, 35mm equivalent on this camera would be approximately 53mm. Uh, we yeah, have the... that one now. 60 mil um, f 2.4 lens, and this is a great low macro slash portrait lens. Mm -hmm. And on this camera, equivalent to 35 again would be approximately 91 mil millimeters. And uh, I'm just going to attach the uh, the more standard lens onto it, the one mm -hmm. where it's equivalent more to the 53. And uh, there's, of course, just like any SLR style you know, interchangeable camera, there's actually a mark there where you line up and you click it in place, and there you go. Uh, very beautiful. The camera itself, if we talk about the, the, some of the concepts and de design behind it, obviously, it is really to look like a, a you know a rangefinder type camera, just like the X100. Where the X100 looked a little bit more retro because of the dual tone, you know, silver and, and, and black. Uh, this is a more sleek, more stylish, uh, designed intentionally to be all black, to be somewhat very silent. Mm -hmm. um, it's we, we wanted to create this camera to, re to, re to be very minimal in terms of its look and styling. So a lot of the buttons and the controls have been somewhat uh, moved into proper position so that you actually don't push certain things. We got a lot well. of feedback from our X100 users yeah. out there uh, that I would say a lot of it's been put to practice in this X-Pro1. And uh, I'll definitely point out all the, the key features and, and, and buttons that uh, have been removed and, and changed and whatnot. But also, if you notice too, we want to keep this camera very minimal. So even on the design itself, if you take a look at the, the front of the camera, um, even the way we thought about you know holding this camera itself, there's a nice grip now mm -hmm. uh, because it's a slightly larger camera than that of the X100. And even the design where most cameras go right across, drop down, and go across like most rangefinders, we designed it to be on a slight angle so that you know when your hand is actually um, holding the camera properly, you have a nice little... Uh, um, a position for your finger so that you can rest it on the shutter yep. button so you're ready to take pictures. And of course, we also moved the uh, the hybrid viewfinder that's also on this camera, but it's actually a, uh, a multi, a hybrid multi view uh, viewfinder, which is very unique again with Fuji. And I'll point out some of the technology behind that. I know Greg mentioned earlier that it uses a 16 megapixel uh, CMOS sensor. It is a newly developed uh, a, a sensor for this camera as well as the color filter arrays where you know this camera actually uses a, a brand new um, color filter array that somewhat mimics the grain of film. Mm -hmm. And in order to produce image quality and sharpness better than some of the you know full frame cameras out there, we actually removed the low pass filter um, on this camera and uh, in, in doing so provided higher resolving power. But of course, you have now to deal with the more the, the patterns, yeah. patterns, and we developed this new six by six, uh, you know, a filter array that that again has random red, green, and blue pixels that really take away from the repeating patterns of a Bayer filter color color filter array, and so it avoids that that more issue. But again, without that that low pass or AA anti aliasing filter. Um, Images are mm -hmm. unbelievably sharp with this camera. Yeah. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at this camera, Greg. If you take a look at the front of the camera, of course, as you notice here, you do have the interchangeable lens again. I do have the 35mm 1.4 lens here, which again on this camera, equivalent to a 35 is approximately 53 millimeters. Uh, on the lens itself, you have the aperture controls so that the, you can move them from, you know, say an f1.4 all the way up to an f16. There's also the automatic mode so that uh, if you want to do shutter priority, you can leave it on the A. Mm -hmm. um, 
in addition to that, and we got feedback from customers with the X100, mm -hmm. they wanted one-third stock. Right. And now you can actually Mechanical do that. Mechanical one-third stock, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, on the actual lens itself. So in between 5.6 or 8, or any other aperture, you can actually move it within one-third stock, which is, allows you to keep the eyes uh, where you mm -hmm. keep the cameras where you want it to be where, for shooting and quickly con control those those uh, more specific Fine aperture tuning. range. Yep. Um, you also have the manual focus ring as well. Again, the manual focus ring is uh, um, not a true hel helenoid uh, connected to the zoom itself, so it is more of a fly-by-wire system to that of the X100 design, but again, improved as well from all the, uh, the feedback that we got. Um, in the front of this lens, of course, that we do have a thread so that you can attach, you know, some of the various filters. For this one instant, it uses a 52 millimeter thread, so you can attach right. whatever commercial available filter. As does the wide angle, and the, the, angle. the uh, tele slash macro lens uses a 39 millimeter filter, That's a little right. bit of an unusual smaller. size, but yeah. Okay, perfect. And of course, all the the lens itself, you know, uh, it does come with a hood included, and it's a nice metal hood, so it's a very, very nice quality uh, lens construction. It, it's, it doesn't feel like one of those plastic lenses out no. there, which is great. So again, looking on the front of the camera, I want to show you a few features. Uh, we have, of course, the, uh, the focusing mechanism here where we can change it from manual focusing to uh, continuous or single autofocus. And again, manual focusing is just done by, by turning that lens. Uh, we have the, uh, the viewfinder here, and this is the window that you see on one side, similar to that of the X100. Uh, we also have the AF assist lap now, and right beside the AF assist lap on the left and right, uh, we also have the stereo microphones mm -hmm. left and right. Um, uh, beside that now, the, the switch to allow you to switch between the, the optical viewfinder and the electronic viewfinder uh, on this camera is actually positioned to the right of your grip. And the reason for that is because, you know, when you hold the camera down now with one finger, your other middle finger is allowed to quickly switch that. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, in terms of ergonomics, ergonomics uh, a little bit easier. Uh, on the bottom right, you have that release to the, uh, to the lens itself, and that's by holding that down, you can twist the camera the lens out and uh, detach the lens. And it's a similar position to that found, you know, if you're used to using your know, Leica style can rangefinder mm -hmm. cameras. And of course, I mentioned earlier, you have that nice little grip now that kind of sticks out, that gives you a nice hold, a nice steady hold. Yeah. The camera's actually a little more hefty, especially with the lens on, so it's nice to have a good grip to that. Okay, on the side of the, one of the sides of this camera, we have, of course, the, the strap eyelid to allow you to attach one, one, one end of the, uh, the uh, strap that's included with the Expo One. Uh, we have the speakers so that, of course, you, if you're recording video, uh, you can actually play that back and hear that. And uh, in addition to, uh, you know, the hot shoe that's on the camera, there's also a, a sync connector here, a PC sync connector that allows you to connect directly to, um, you know, studio yeah, lighting. Yeah. So that, uh, again, you don't have to use any hot shoe I, I can hear the cheers out there, people <laughs> listening to this already. So it makes a uh, pretty good, uh, possibly a good uh, studio-style mm -hmm. camera. On the opposite side, we do have the battery cover, uh, the uh, terminal cover that hides the uh, mini HDMI port as well as the USB connector. And of course, that allows you to download images to the computer um, you know, with the included USB. We always recommend, you know, for this category camera, and most people too, to buy a card reader, mm -hmm. um, which makes it easier to easier, download. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look, a quick look at the bottom. Uh, the bottom is made of a magnesium alloy, just like the X100, but it's, of course it's on black now. We've got a metal tripod. Um, we also have the battery cover that slides and flips open. And this camera uses a new lithium battery, an NPW126 126, battery. Yeah. And the approximate voltage is about 7.2 volts and uh, has a minimum amp of uh, about 1200 milliamps. Uh, it lasts pretty long with this style camera. We also have a slot there for the SD card, and of course it supports SD, SDHC and SDXC XC. cards, as well as the ultra high speed uh, uh, cards as well, the UHS cards. Yeah, we recommend um, a, uh, at least probably class six or absolutely. higher for this one because of its HD video capability. And of course also because of the draw capabilities sure, and, and JPEG. So it's highly, well. highly recommended. You know, to be honest with you, the faster card you have, the better experience you can have with the stout camera, and, and that's the way to go with it. Uh, if we take a look at the top of this camera, we have, uh, you know, again, a very minimal display. As you can see, there's a Fujifilm Expo One logo on it. It's a Fujinon lens. It's, 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 it's showing on that as well. Uh, we have different markers here. We have, uh, first, the hot shoe, which is a, uh, supports full TTL with, you know, Fuji's, you know, EF-42 um, flash as well as the EF-20 you know, flash. 
And of course, there will be a new flash that's that's specific for the Expo One that can also be used with the, all the other cams that have you know a hot shoe as well. And it's it's more designed to mimic the look and style mm -hmm. of the Expo One. We don't have it here because it's not ready yet. But it will have the same style of dials and and flip controls to manually adjust the the, the, the um, um, flash if we need it. Uh, and the reason for that, of course, is because this camera no longer has a built-in no. flash. So uh, we decided. Uh, due to design and styling that we, we you know, rather have a, a small external flash when you do need to use it. Um, so again, continue on with the top, we have the shutter uh, controls. Uh, again, now there's a lock on this, so you can push the button down and rotate and go through the various shutter speeds up to one four thousandth of a second to as slow as a bulb mode. And uh, setting it on A will lock the dial so that, you know, if you want to do aperture priority or do full program auto, you can just leave it both on A on the lens and on the shutter speed dial. You got the on and off switch, which is connected similar to the X100 to the uh, shutter release. And the shutter release also has a built-in um, um, thread so that you can attach, obviously, a manual uh, cable release, which is great. Um, the uh, design of the electronic um, exposure compensation like button has been improved similar to the X100, so it's now more flush with the body, so you don't accidentally rotate mm -hmm. that uh, as well. There's a function button that uh, defaults obviously to the ISO controls, but you can actually uh, manually uh, uh, customize that just like you would with the X100. Yeah, a lot of people with the feedback on the X100 wish that they could customize that function button because they, they'd prefer to play around with white balance or something besides the ISO. So Absolutely. You asked, we did it. And if you hold down the function button for a few seconds, you can go right into the customization screen to adjust right. that. Okay, Okay. let's take a look at the back of the X Pro 1 now. As you can okay. see, uh, we have, of course, the, uh, the LCD screen is actually a uh, a high res screen just like that of the X100, mm -hmm. but there's actually a new uh, LCD panel um, uh, filter that allows for reduced glare right. and actually allows for better color reproduction, uh, even in bright sunlight, so that you can get accurate uh, reading from the LCD screen itself. So that's again much improved. Uh, we got the optical viewfinder, and the optical viewfinder, uh, you know, there's no diopter adjustment, but just like the olden day style cameras, you do have a little uh, screw mount here where you can actually purchase and find your own uh, diopter adjustment lens piece and attach it on. And it's also great because it now allows for some accessories like you know rubber eyepieces that you can look for that provide for more comfortable mm -hmm. viewing if that's what you want to do. Right beside it, you have, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the eye sensor that automatically will, will determine to switch between the LCD screen or the, uh, the viewfinder. And you can also configure that, of course. You got the view modes now, which is placed right up top here, which is easier to see. It used to be on the left-hand side which was more confusing, but now we know exactly where you can control the, the, the controls for the optical viewfinder and the LCD screen. So you can, you can push the view mode to display the eye sensor, which automatically switches, or the optical viewfinder slash hybrid viewfinder or the LCD screen. So three different options there. Right beside it, we have the command dial. And the command dial, instead of the X100 flip left and right switch, it's now more of a rotating switch, which is a lot easier to control um, you know, different settings, whether it's ISO selections or, or white balance selections or any manual selections. It also acts as a button, so you can push in as well, and uh, it would also uh, do things, you know, like zooming in on a picture instantly where the focus points are. Um, we still have the AEL AFL button, which is the auto exposure auto focus lock, and by pushing that, of course, you can reconfigure it just like the X100 to how you want it to to react, whether it's a sticky button or you actually have to hold it down. Uh, going back to the left hand side, you have the drive mode. And the drive mode basically allows you to change the different shooting modes from you know high speed shooting to even you know moving modes movies, yeah. to shooting you know uh, uh, a bracketing, bracketing options with this camera. Very similar to that of yeah, the, uh, the X100. X100. Same modes, yeah. uh, it also doubles as a zoom in button as well during playback. Uh, of course, the AE button also doubles as the uh, zoom out button. And during shooting, of course, it's your auto ex auto exposure control. So you can select between the different uh, mm -hmm. the metering systems, where it's matrix, right. center, center um, weighted, or, or average metering. Yeah. And of course, you have the AF button. And the AF button allows you to select between the 49 different points of right. focus. Uh, using again, the LCD similar screen. to the X100. And again, you can change the size of those focus points. Exactly by using that yeah. command by using that command level right here. And of course, the uh, the delete button on playback it, it doubles up. Of course, as that we got the playback button now. Again, if you notice, all these buttons are actually a lot larger 
and one of the one of the suggestions was to make the buttons a little bit easier to access because the X100 may have been a little bit smaller and harder to push. Yes. So we actually produced it so that it's a lot Big easier. Big improvement for us. there. Um, you also notice that uh, in this little center area, there's no longer a rotating dial, so you're not going to accidentally uh, rotate and change anything anymore. And, and you don't really need to have that sub command dial because you have you know one third stop aperture yes, controls yeah. uh, on this camera. And but a customizable function button and exactly. also the new Q button. That you're and the new Q about. button. And the and great point, Greg, is this Q button, when you push it, now it gives you uh, quick access to you know, um, you know some of the most common use settings like ISO, white balance. There's actually uh, an option there uh, to, to select between uh, the various Custom settings. There's actually seven different custom settings that we can set up so that you know you can adjust things like ISO, dynamic range, white balance, the type of film, the the, the whether it's JPEG or RAW, noise reduction, the highlight tones, uh, sh uh, shadow tones, color, uh, sharpness. You know even flash settings, focus points. All these can be customized so that you can just rotate this dial and select between the different custom mm -hmm. modes and you're ready to shoot in what situation you, you sort of prepare yourself. But also, if you wanted just to, to leave it on basic, you can also change things like uh, the dynamic range by, by highlighting that and using the command dial to, to adjust that automatically. So it is a quick access button that, that makes you, doesn't have to. For you, many of your main controls, quick access, yeah. easy to scroll across them, easy to change all the options. You don't have to go into the menu yeah. anymore no, to I, actually I do that. With it. it's so again, going back to the directional pad up down left right of course you navigate the menu you got the macro uh, button you can push up to change the macro focus distance uh, the menu OK button of course access uh, as the enter or OK button on a computer per se uh, you got the display back button that toggles between the different displays in terms of information uh, custom um, standard and depending on the different modes that you have it on the, the different options show up there and of course, um, the menus also change now so that when you push the menu OK button, instead of having one shooting setup and one shooting menu and one setup menu, mm -hmm. you have five different uh, shooting tabs and three different setup tabs. So now you can quickly navigate through the various uh, uh, settings on yeah. this camera without having to scroll through multiple pages right. just to get to that one setting. So again, we did think about uh, improving the usability of this camera. Um, so that's just a quick little view of the, the whole camera Great. itself. It's a beautiful design camera, again, very minimal, very stylish. And of course, at the end of the day, this camera really is all about image quality. Yeah. You know, from some of the customizations to the, the high quality Fujinon lenses and the very fast lenses that are produced. Um, you know, this is an incredible camera that uh, I'm really happy to uh, Yeah, well, to we're going to make some other videos on some of the top features and you know, going to our website, you're going to learn a lot more about, uh, you know, that specific uh, color filter array that we exactly. use for this and removing the anti-aliasing filter and things like that and how we've been able to boost the image quality up, you know, in conjunction with the Fujinon uh, quality optics as well. And, you know, one, one last point to make, too, is, I mean, this camera is, you know, similar to, you know, a first interchangeable lens camera. You know, in this style of, of, of make, and obviously the S5 Pro, if you have a shot with an S5 Pro, it's unbelievable mm. skin tones and yeah. skin tone reproduction. I can pretty much say this is very similar as well. And then also we offer this new Pro Negative S and That's Pro right. Negative H mode mm -hmm. for film simulation that mimics you know, some of our, um, uh, our professional film for studio work. Our NPS and, and our NPC color exactly. negative films for those who've uh, used, used film this. before. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. I'm, I bet you there's a lot of people interested in this camera that have used film before. Well, that's a great overview, but we are going to have other videos, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow Billy on Twitter, Twitter. for all the updates on the X-Pro1 and other Fuji cameras. Um, you know, we did mention uh, a little bit about the accessories, but, uh, you know, we'll talk about more about the accessories and other, other things videos, that you can get in the other videos. So. Until then, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And this is the X-Pro1, and we're the Fuji guys.